The Scholarship Jacket by Marta Salinas The small Texas school that I went to had a tradition carried out every year during the 8th grade graduation. A beautiful gold and green jacket, the school colors, was awarded to the class valedictorian, the student who had maintained the highest grades for eight years. The scholarship jacket had a big gold S on the left front side and your name written in gold letters on the pocket. My oldest sister, Rosie, had won the jacket a few years back and I fully expected to also. I was 14 and in the 8th grade. I had been a straight A student since the first grade and this last year had looked forward very much to owning that jacket. My father was a farm laborer who couldn't earn enough money to feed eight children, so when I was six, I was given to my grandparents to raise. We couldn't participate in sports at school because there were registration fees, uniform costs and trips out of town. So, even though our family was quite agile and athletic, there would never be a school sports jacket for us. This one, the scholarship jacket, was our only chance. In May, close to graduation, spring fever had struck as usual with a vengeance. No one paid any attention in class. Instead, we stared out the windows and at each other wanting to speed up the last few weeks of school. I absent-mindedly wandered from my history class to the gym. Then I remembered my P.E. shorts were still in a bag under my desk where I'd forgotten them. I had to walk all the way back to get them. Coach Thompson was a real bear if someone wasn't dressed for P.E. I was almost back at my classroom door when I heard voices raised in anger, as if in some sort of argument. I stopped. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. I just hesitated, not knowing what to do. I needed those shorts and I was going to be late, but I didn't want to interrupt an argument between my teachers. I recognized the voices. Mr. Schmidt, my history teacher, and Mr. Boone, my math teacher. They seemed to be arguing about me. I couldn't believe it. I still remember the feeling of shock that rooted me flat against the wall, as if I were trying to blend in with the graffiti written there. I refuse to do it. I don't care who her father is. Her grades don't even begin to compare to Martha's. I won't lie or falsify records. Martha has a straight A-plus average and you know it. That was Mr. Schmidt and he sounded very angry. Mr. Boone's voice sounded calm and quiet. Look, Joanne's father is not only on the board, he owns the only store in town. We could say it was a close tie and... The pounding in my ears drowned out the rest of the words. Only a word here and there filtered through. Martha is Mexican. Resign. Won't do it. Mr. Schmidt came rushing out and luckily for me went down the opposite way toward the auditorium. So he didn't see me. Shaking, I waited a few minutes and then went in and grabbed my bag and fled from the room. Mr. Boone looked up when I came in but didn't say anything. To this day, I don't remember if I got in trouble in PE for being late or how I made it through the rest of the afternoon. I went home very sad and cried into my pillow that night so Grandmother wouldn't hear me. It seemed a cruel coincidence that I had overheard that conversation. The next day, when the principal called me into his office, I knew what it would be about. He looked uncomfortable and unhappy. 
I decided I wasn't going to make it any easier for him, so I looked him straight in the eyes. He looked away and fidgeted with the papers on his desk. Martha, he said, there's been a change in policy this year regarding the scholarship jacket. As you know, it has always been free. He cleared his throat and continued. This year, the board has decided to charge $15, which still won't cover the complete cost of the jacket. I stared at him in shock, and a small sound of dismay escaped my throat. I hadn't expected this. He still avoided looking in my eyes. So, if you are unable to pay the $15 for the jacket, it will be given to the next one in line. I didn't need to ask who that was. Standing with all the dignity I could muster, I said, I'll speak to my grandfather about it, sir, and let you know tomorrow. I cried on the walk home from the bus stop 